everyone and a welcome to your commentary for lesson number 24 i do not perceive my own best interests now i remember when i read this and i thought the audacity what do you mean i don't know my own best interest i know what's going to make me happy i know exactly what's going to make me happy i just need to win the lottery that's going to make me happy or i just need to be in the best i just need to be in a better relationship that's going to make me happy i just need to travel the world that's going to make me happy Lots of things I thought would make me happy. But in truth, here it is. I don't know what's going to make me happy. And I am willing. I am so willing to realize that, recognize that, and ask for guidance on how I can be truly happy. Because let's say that you go ahead and you do win the lottery. Okay? And you're super excited, but then you start noticing that, yeah, a lot, you have a lot more friends, but these friends just want to go places with you, or they just want to spend time at your beautiful new mansion, or they want to buy things with you. They want to go shopping with you because you are such a wonderful, kind-hearted person. And, you know, you're always giving and you're like, oh, totally fine. You know, I got the money. I can spend it. No worries. But then you start isolating yourself because you're not really sure if people are there to actually be your friend or if they're your friend because you have money. So you're not really happy anymore. So the lottery didn't change anything. It just made you richer, but no happier. Yeah, you don't have any more of those money problems. Great, wonderful. But you have no one to share it with. You have no way of extending love because you're not sure if the person that you're with is really there for you or if they're there for your money. Another great example of this is let's say that you want to be, <clears throat> excuse me, in a certain relationship with someone. Let's say it's like a high school sweetheart and they just, I mean, they were amazing. They were kind, warm hearted, sophisticated. I mean, they seem to have the whole package. And then, you know, several years later, then opportunity arises where you actually get to go on a date with that person and you are thrilled. You're like, O-M-G, yes. All my dreams are going to come true. Everything's going to change because I'm dating this person. And then you go on the date with the person and it's a great date. And then you go on a second one and it's another great date. You go on a third one, it's another great date. And then you start, you know, really getting into the relationship and you begin to notice something. You begin to notice that you're not really happy because the person that they portrayed themselves to be was not the truth of who they were. You know, all this a talk of sophistication and generosity, kind heartedness wasn't the truth of who they were. You know, they were just kind of putting on that mask. And once again, now you're not happy. You thought it was going to make you happy, but in truth, it really didn't. And that's why we don't perceive our own best interests. We think we know what's best for us. I remember thinking, you know, when I read that, I know what's best for me. I know exactly what's going to fix this situation. I just need, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever that blow, I just need blank and blank will fix everything. But I don't know what's going to fix everything. And I remember reading uh, in Sonia Choquette's book, Trust Your Vibes, there was a story uh, where basically this woman would always go around, she'd be like, trust the universe. Trust the universe. Universe has got your back. A Gabrielle Bernstein book as well. Uh, but universe has got your back. Universe has got your back. And she was, pre you know, she was preaching it everywhere. She wasn't practicing it herself. And basically, what happened was her life kind of went through a drastic shift, where she really had to trust in the universe. And she was praying and she was asking, you know, what do I do? What do I do? I know I have to trust you. I know I've been telling everyone to trust, and now I got to trust. And she got the guidance to, you know, go to the store. And so she went to the store and she actually happened to find a friend there. She kind of had told the friend what was going on. The friend said, oh my gosh, well, it's so funny that you're bringing this up to me because um, a journalist we were going to hire, because the lady was a journalist, um, actually backed out. And uh, we need someone to fill the spot. And my company is willing to give, uh, you know, basically a $25,000, you know, um, like in advance payment. And she was like, uh, I will take it. And it was actually on a subject she loved. So even though her life had gone through this drastic change, she didn't have any money for rent. She didn't have any money for food, but she followed her guidance because spirit always knows what's best for you. So not only was she able to pay off all her credit cards, pay her rent, pay for food, get what she needed. She also had extra money. And now she had, you know, this, this job. 
and it all worked out for her and it can work out for you, but you have to let go of what you think is best, just like I did. I will not lie to you guys. I remember, you know, when I first started this, I thought this was it. Okay, I have to make money this way and this way only. And then when things, you know, wouldn't work out, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm a failure and this is all terrible and oh my God, and I can't go get a real job because, you know, that means I would fail and so forth and so on. And it wasn't until I just said, you know what, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do it. I'm willing to see this differently. I'm willing to give this whole situation to you, spirit. And once I gave the situation to spirit and said, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what's best for me. That's when everything started to shift and everything started to change. And it was beautiful because I didn't have to do anything except offer my willingness to say that I do not know. In our society, knowledge is seen as, you know, having power and we do have infinite knowledge within us. But we have to access that knowledge by coming into that state of like a child. A child doesn't know. And when they don't know, they go to someone who does. And they're not afraid to say, I don't know how to do this. Or I don't know what this is. Can you tell me? And we need to be like that with our own guidance system. With, you know, you can call it the Holy Spirit, your guides, your angels, higher self galactic or intergalactic beings, interdimensional beings, whatever, spaghetti monster in the sky. It's whatever you ascribe to your higher power. And we have to be willing to be humble and humble and actually not humble. We have to be willing to be gracious. That's the word I want to use, not humble. We have to be gracious enough to say, I don't know what to do here. I don't know how to do it, but I am willing to be led. I'm willing to be shown what is in my best interest. And something I love to use is, Holy Spirit, teach me. Help me to remember, you know, what it is that I need to learn. Not even learn, but help me just to remember. And so that is something that I use. If I don't know, you know, for the longest time, I really didn't know what made me happy. I had a friend call me and she's like, Ron, what makes you happy? And I was telling her, I was like, oh, I really like doing my readings. I really like doing this. I really like doing that. She goes, yeah, but what makes you happy? And I was like, well, those things do make me happy. And she goes, But like, what do you like to do? And I was like, uh, and I had a, I literally had a breakdown. I started crying because I didn't know what actually made me happy. I knew what made everyone else happy with me, but I didn't know what actually made me happy. So I had to say, Holy Spirit, I don't know what makes me happy. Can you help me to see what, what's in my best interest, please? And thank you. And thank you in advance that you will show me what truly makes me happy. And it was shown to me and it was absolutely beautiful. You know, I love horseback riding. Uh, There's a place in, you know, that's two hours away from where I live that I get to go and I, and it's only $30 and I get to go horseback riding. And because that's something I love to do. I love to be on the horse. I love to go on nature walks. There's three or four parks around me that I can drive to and just walk through because I love to just walk in nature something that just really brings me a lot of joy. I love to watch anime. It makes me happy. It makes me get in that childlike wonder of, wow, this is so cool. This is so amazing. So be willing to let go of all you think you think and think you know, and allow spirit to really tell you the truth for you instead of you trying to always interpret it for yourself. So I send you all my love.